Okay, folks, welcome back. This is a supplementary lesson for price action model number four on position trading. Okay, so ICT price action model number four, uh, position trading, quarterly shifts, and seasonal tendencies. Now, obviously, in review, I won't spend too much time on this because you should already be familiar with this model. It's already been presented in its foundation. The stage for the setups are going to be quarterly shifts, so every three months or so, there's going to be a swing that forms in the marketplace, and we're coupling it with a seasonal tendency. The setup itself is going to be framed on a smart money tool or technique combining uh, correlated pair SMT or USDX SMT. And we're blending with a confluence of the COT hedging program. Okay, so my application of uh, deciphering what COT data is telling us. Not, tra not traditionally seen in COT data. And the pattern itself is going to be external range liquidity as our profit objective. Okay, so this is the framework, okay, because I gave you last year, okay, in 2018, I gave you a presentation that utilized the bearish seasonal tendency in the British pound. Now, I'm sticking with that one here because it's salient. It, it communicates the framework, the the truth, okay, the prognostication of the things that I actually taught you last year, it just happened again, okay? So <laughs> if there's any doubt, okay, if there's any doubt whatsoever, if I'm teaching you something that is relevant or if it's really there or if it's the truth behind the marketplace, let this be a testimony to it, okay? Trust me, I'm giving you gold. This is the overall um, internal perspective I have on this model. This is how I internalize everything. Uh, so if I was to refer to certain aspects to this model, again, like I said in the foundational study when it was first released last year, these are the things that I'm envisioning in price. Okay, so I'm top of the list. Okay, the highest part of this slide is I'm referring to the IPTA data ranges. Okay, so I'm looking back 20, 40, and 60 days. And I'm considering what the commitment of traders hedging program is what it's telling me so the way i manipulate the data to tell me what the overall i guess net position really is for the commercials not on the basis of what traditional cot or commitment of traders graphs show but the way i interpret it okay so if you are unfamiliar with that if you rush through the mentorship you need to go back through all that because it's important to understand it. The overall price structure or market structure is on the daily chart, I want to see some previous high broken on the upside. Okay, so if that occurs and at the same time a SMT divergence forms, and then in the graph shown here, it's showing that this would be basically a euro dollar. And this would be like British pound. Okay, so the British pound making a higher high, running on an old high or an older high over here, and the euro dollar failing to make a higher high. The setup is this for pound. So the pound must have this price structure here. Okay, so if the market structure does not show this, model four is not happening yet. Okay, you have to wait or it just doesn't come to fruition. Now, if you're looking at the SMT divergence with the dollar index and you have inverted, okay, or in your indicator I share with you, if you have set it to mirror, it's going to show it like this. This would be the dollar index like that, okay, and this would be what you would expect to see, a higher high in the cable or British pound versus the dollar, or if you're just looking at the futures market of the British pound, it's a higher high being formed in pound sterling and a lower high if the dollar index is 
mirrored or inverted. If it's not being inverted, you want to see a failed lower low. Okay, in other words, it's going to be a higher low on the dollar index. Okay? And trust me, listen to what I just said. Everything I just explained to you, you should know. And this is the expectation that we have. This is a monthly candle. We're looking for expansion on the downside, targeting some daily equal low or old sell side liquidity pool. And we're going to be utilizing the last six months. Okay, look back for the COT hedging program. And the final piece of the puzzle is we want to see this forming during a seasonal tendency. So we're seeing the commercials hold a heavy net short position. With my interpretation of COT data, seasonal tendency, net short commercials, higher high, running liquidity on the buy side, they're pairing orders. That's the ideal scenario. They want to be above an old high. They want to be up there where there's a high pool of liquid uh, uh, participants that want to buy it from them, okay, because buy stocks will be ran out on short holders, okay, or breakout artists will be buying that breakout, and smart money will be util utilizing that liquidity to be counterparty for their short positions, and we'll be doing the same thing. And again, we're focusing on this slide here. Uh, next year, um, I will give you an example for this model. And I know it seems like I'm, I'm stretching it out a lot, but as you'll see with this lesson, it's not that you're not learning something new because I'm actually going to show you as we go through these how they all complement themselves. Okay, they, they work well with one another. Even though you can only really just focus on one and do very, very well, in other words, one model, um, some of you may have fallen in love with model one or model two you know, or three. Uh, model four is really, really good if you're a long-term perspective trader, but don't think that just because I'm only giving you once a year updates on these models that they're not um, they're not important or they're not uh, relevant or not going to be helpful to you because you're going to see in this lesson how a lot of things come together and even if you don't want to be a position trader say you're a day trader at heart or a scalper and you know, even a, a one shot one kill is just too much of a time to be in a trade for yourself they say that's your personality and it may be then this model doesn't really communicate, you know, that effectively to you right now, okay? You probably watched it, okay, especially the new group of uh, charter members. You probably watched this and said, man, you know, it's all great and all, Michael, but, you know, <laughs> this doesn't fit me, man. I see you doing all these day trades, and I want to be a day trader. Well, again, don't try to mimic me, okay? I'm giving you 12 unique models, and I'm going to build them up over time, but you're going to also see over time by studying them all collectively, they all help you understand each of them individually and as a whole. So these 12 models are going to be kind of like your foundation to a complete perspective and a wide spectrum of understanding price action. So even though you may not be a position trader or you may not be a day trader, this model is going to communicate a whole lot of detail especially with this supplementary uh, lesson here. So I don't want to I don't want to browbeat you, okay, and, and give you all kinds of hype, 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 hype. I'm just going to let it deliver it itself, and then you, know, you, you come to a conclusion whether or not you, you gleaned anything useful from it. I believe you will. So again, this lesson is going to focus on, again, just what we shared last year, okay, for model number four. This is going to be just one more evidence to the very things I taught last year. And if I was honest with you, I'd tell you, you're probably thinking when you first see these models that this isn't what I hoped it would be. And what your expectations and your hopes are is I'm going to tell you how to get into a trade every single time using it. But there's going to be a graduated understanding that's required. Okay. And like I said, this is 27 years almost now of experience, and I just there's no way for me to compress it into a tiny little pill for you to swallow, and you, boom, you have everything that I know. It doesn't work like that. So you have to see things conceptually, and then I introduce other things that will complement that 
but I'm not going to draw too many parallels to what you should see because I'm going to rob you of that aha moment where it happens. And then when you get that moment, it's astonishing and you get addicted to it and it feeds your desire to study more. That's why I teach the way I teach. It may be frustrating for some of you. You want all of it right now because you think you're going to understand it and you don't. And the perfect uh, illustration of that is look how much I gave in free tutorials. Look how much I gave. And I was giving out wave after wave of videos. And people are still swimming in that stuff and they don't know what they're doing with it because it's overload. So in the mentorship, I'm giving you a structured way of studying it bite by bite, piece by piece. And over time, you're going to devour the elephant. Okay, And that elephant is that smart money elephant where it jumps in that little children's pool like I taught in the free tutorials to give displacement. You'll appreciate all that because you've gone through a structured learning. Here, I don't want to give you too much. And right now, I'm talking to the group that's already paid. So there's no sales pitch. I'm not stringing you along. You already gave me your money. So I want you to focus on the things that are very, very, I guess, generic. They just repeat over and over and over again throughout all of the models. And that's that one string that from model number one to model number 12, if any one of those models, if you tug on a string, okay, of, of insight, all of the models will, will react because they're linked. There's no one in one particular model that is, in, you know, individualized, okay, or isolated. Okay, it's not like all of them have their own unique, they can't work any other way, uh, this is the way it is. They're these models are always in action. They're always in play. The perspective is, is when you sit down in front of the charts, when you get in sync with price action, where are we at in this spectrum of these 12 models? That's the paradigm that's going to shift in your understanding. But I can't make that happen for you. It'll happen by your studying and, and relating to all of them on an individual basis first, then collectively. Okay, so... Next year, I will give you a, a bullish scenario. I just wanted to communicate to the first group because I had a lot of uh, people in the first group. They weren't really won over by this one, okay, because it was like, okay, this is what you have to do. And they had to sit around and wait a full year <laughs> to see if this would really work. And here we are. So, again, this is a, a, a repeat of the same theme that we used in the initial foundational lesson. Okay, so this slide will look very familiar. It's the exact same one. And we're focusing on the British pound and the month of May. And the seasonal tendency here is very clear. You can see the month of May typically is bearish for pound sterling. All right, so this chart here, this is a chart from cotbase.com. Okay, c-o-t-b-a-s-e. Dot com. It's a free website. It allows you to pull up what you're seeing here. Uh, I was trying to pull up the barchart.com uh, COT chart and you know, like disable the small specs and the large speculators and just show the commercial line. But for whatever reason, <laughs> the, the interactive chart that allows you to do that there wouldn't let me do it. So I'm not sure if it's something I've done, but I just didn't have enough time to work with it today. So I just used another free resource on the Internet. And if you weren't aware of this one, this is another one. I learned about this actually from a couple of our students. They asked me what my opinion of it was. I looked at it, and that's pretty good. But they do offer like a premium side. I don't know anything about the premium side. I don't get any kickbacks. I literally just went to this website for the second time today just to grab this chart. The only other time I've ever been there was when the student were asking me what my opinion was about it. And my opinion is this. As long as the data is showing in a, a, a manner that is supporting your study and it's not grossly inaccurate, then, uh, you, then you can use it. Don't let me kind of like paint you into a corner and you only use these tools, okay? It, you may end up finding something that I love. Okay, that I'm not aware of. I'm, I'm, right now, my time is preoccupied with this. And I used to have a lot of time to be able to look for other things and, and, and delve into other, you know, 
individual studies and researches and, and, and take a look at what's available out there. I don't have that luxury anymore. I, I'm, I'm inundated with everyone that's a part of this group. So this is the chart you would see if you pulled up the British pound at cotbase.com. And take a look at the chart down here. Okay, this is the commercials. This is that red line. And it's set to six months, which is really nice because I teach you the COT hedging program perspective on a six-month basis, a 12-month basis, and a multi-year. Okay, so from, from a quarterly shift standpoint, in other words, every three months or so, there's going to be a price swing that takes place. Now, in your notes, this is what you want to be writing. Every three months, there's going to be a significant quarterly shift and price swing. Not every single currency is going to have that unfold. The key is you want to be studying the market for right now. What quarter are we in and what seasonal tendencies are hot right now or what should be hot? Okay, in other words, what, what typically happens you know, with a great deal of uh, consistency with the seasonal tendencies, what markets are generally moving one-sided, higher or lower? Okay, and if you do that, you'll, you'll be better equipped to use this model. When I look at this price chart like this, or if I ever look at COT data, I am just, because I've been doing it for so long, I ignore the large speculators because it's always going to be a mirror image of what the commercials are doing. Okay, so if you look at what they're doing, I mean, they're actually marked to market, lock, you know, counterparties. Everything on the commercial side is liquidity purpose. They are taking the other side. They are the provider of the currency. It's their it's their commodity. It's their product. Okay, so when they sell it to people, okay, they're providing that liquidity. If they want to ring in that uh, that price, okay, they, they will manipulate things in price to kind of like deter interest one way or the other by the large speculators. The small speculators is going to be shown under these two lines here on cotbase.com's chart. The small speculators are just completely graphed independently, which I love, which the, the folks at this website did a really wonderful job in that, re in that regard because whenever you look at the COT graph in its traditional stance, usually the small speculators are in here somewhere doing whatever they're doing, and they're generally most of the time wrong. So we don't care about small speculators, and we really don't need to see what the large speculators are doing. Okay, so that's the, the understanding you get from studying with me. I don't care what those two other lines are showing me because I already know what the large funds are doing. They're going to be the opposite of whatever the commercials are doing Okay, because commercials are offering counterparty liquidity. So when I see this, my, my eye goes immediately to the highest in the last six months, and I find the lowest in the last six months. That's my range. And then I see where we are currently. Okay, And that's all you're doing when you're using the, the, the application of COT hedge programming that I taught in the mentorship. What it looks like graphically once you change it all up. And again, I do not do this on my own study. I don't need to do it. I can see it. Over time, you will get this way too. Or maybe you need to do this. Okay. But all I did was take the highest of the commercials net position and the lowest of the net position by the commercials. And that's that range. Half of that range is here. Everything above it, I shade green. Everything below it, I shade red. Now, you've seen many, many examples of me in showing you this. If you look at the COT data, and again, let's look at it again. This is the graph. If you look at it from a traditional stance, they're net long. So they're above the zero line. The, what's, the, what's the commercial perspective from a retail uh, a trader using COT at this moment? They're bullish, right? Well, the commercials are long. Why is this going down like this if the commercials are holding a net long position? Oh, COT doesn't work. I'm, I'm frustrated with this. This is dumb. Believe me, I had that, that, <laughs> that thought process entered my mind so many times when I was a younger guy because I didn't know what I was doing. Even as good as Larry Williams' information was, as he taught about it in his 1970s book, 
How I Made a Million Dollars Trading Commodities Last Year. Absolutely awesome book. It's one of the best books you'll ever, ever, ever own in your library. So many things about that book are still real, true, they're relevant to today, and they're probably always going to be relevant because the markets are going to move the way they are. If you use his view of COT data, you're not going to see what I show you here. Okay, I, I don't know if Larry's ever seen what I've done with COT data, but the long and short of it is, is it's there's nothing like it because when you come to this conclusion, you really get to the core of what the commercials are doing. All through here, they're net long. And look what's happening. Every time we hit a discount array that's bullish, the market rallies. Okay, they're net long. We trade down into an order block, fair value gap, beautiful, it expands again. Okay, price comes back down again, trades into an order block. This is a wick, so you disregard that. Go right back in here, the order block, trade into here, and look at this big pop in commercial net long positions right there. And then you see a really nice surge in price there. They stay net long in here, but very, very modestly, and then they shift gears there. Now watch what happens. Accumulation, 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 and boom, here's the displacement. Something's up. What's going on? They're selling in here. And look what they're doing. They're selling aggressively right there. As price runs up, they're still selling into this rally. Remember this high here? Right here? That's not farm payroll for May. That Friday, remember what I said that week? I said many times the non-farm payroll will create the Judas swing for the monthly range. That wasn't the only time I've ever said that, but the key is you have to know model number four. Oh, now it's starting to get real good, isn't it? If you know what you're looking for for the next quarterly shift or the monthly seasonal tendency that's going to be hot right now, and you look at the the non-farm payroll, if it creates a nice, obvious, one-sided directional move, it could lead to a Judas swing. Okay, so in other words, it's creating the, uh, the opposite end of the monthly range. So if we're bearish, like the seasonal tendency is for British Pound in May, if it rallies on non-farm payroll, well, you can pretty much safely assume that there's probably a worthwhile investment on your part to go in there and study and see if there's something in there as a short. Now, I'm not trying to sell it to you hard. I'm not trying to imply that, hey, look, you know, this is always going to work. It's 100% all the time. That's not what I'm suggesting here. But I am saying that if you don't at least consider it every May, then you're really missing the boat in terms of a really loaded lead pipe cinch deal. In other words, these types of trades are the ones that are so heavily one-sided. Not all of them will pan out. They're not 100%. But if you are ever going to find trades that are going to be so far in your favor but still not be perfect and 100% because nothing ever is, this is it. This is the model you look for for these really low-hanging fruit barn burner, just knock them out of the park type trades, model number four. The problem is the first group that went through, and maybe the new charter members that just recently obtained charter level, they're now watching this video as well, and just watched the first introduction to model number four, they, again, they probably were underwhelmed because they think, oh, he's only just taught about the seasonal tendency for a British pound in May. That's just one trade. How many months are in a year, Michael? It's 12, right? Right. But how many markets are there? And you want to go through all of your seasonal tendencies. I gave them to you in month number five. And I told you, go through and pick the ones that you really feel comfortable with. I gave you my best picks for seasonal tendencies. So that's another lesson. If you go back and look at all that stuff, combine it with model number four. Oh, oh now you got something else to study this weekend over those hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> so we can see heavy net selling by the commercials all throughout here and so while this is consolidating this could have been like well you know this looks like it's bullish it's it's a, a bull flag it's a consolidation part of an uptrend is going to continue up well no not necessarily especially if we combine what the dollar index is suggesting when we've been bullish on dollar index 
waiting for that weekly Sibby to fill in. Seasonal tendency enters the market for British Pound in May as bearish. Non-farm payroll, Friday of May, we get that big surge higher. Now, do you think it was random now looking at it in hindsight? Perfect hindsight. You can see we cleared out a nice old high. They're heavily in that short. They're selling. All this is is manipulation right in here. All this right here is manipulation. This is the Judas swing. Moving on into the, the logic and the parameters for the trade. Again, the idea was that the seasonal tendency for the pound sterling is bearish in the month of May. And we look for a COT hedging program to reflect an excessive net short holding by the commercials. Trading on the anticipation of a quarterly shift in the majors. When GBP USD, or the British pound futures market, runs an old high inside a 20, 40, or 60-day IPTA daily range, and there is a SMT divergence in either the dollar index or the euro dollar, if you go back and look at your charts on May's high, on the daily chart, and I'll show you a chart with the dollar index in con on contrast, but I don't include the euro dollar chart here, but it did diverge bearishly to the higher high in the uh, uh, British pound. But we look to short the open of the last up-close candle on a stop. Okay, so I'll go into the next chart and you can see a little bit more detail. Now, May's monthly range, when it's bearish, and it's typically when we expect it to be bearish in the month of May, this is every single year, folks. Every single year, I look for shorting opportunities in May for the British pound. It's just one of those months that if you just sit back and you just wait, let everything line up, and just let it go. Don't worry about it. Trade it. Follow the rules, and you'll be fine. Okay, you might get stopped out. You might be a losing trade once in a while throughout your whole career. One year will happen where it doesn't work. And believe me, if it does, don't throw this away. Don't toss it out, you know, thinking, oh, it's, it's never going to work again. Don't do that because it's so strong of a seasonal tendency. Don't be surprised if one year, it could be next year it doesn't work. Then it goes right back in the sink again. Or it could work the next five years in a row. And then on the sixth year, it nails you with a losing trade. Okay, don't read too much into that because this is such a it's got 40 years of data supporting it now that's incredible 40 years man think about that 40 freaking years you're not even going to be trading that long let's be honest okay <laughs> you're not going to be a trader that long i'm not going to be probably trading 40 years so let's be let's be clear about that you don't need a lot of sample size data to support this model because it supports itself because of the seasonal tendency that's created over the long time that the British pound, I mean, simply just go back. Look at your data. Look how many times every single month of May, how often GBP or pound sterling futures contract declines in this month. Around 500 pips or so. That's what, the, that's what I wrote up in, the, in the, uh, the post for the forum. It averages around $500 per pip. Now, did I just pull that number out of the air? Mm-mm. No. Go back and look at it for yourself, and then you'll be convinced. Don't take my word for anything, because all I'm doing is pointing, and you're never going to believe it until you practice with it and see it and study it. And once you have the data, like I've taught you how to uh, accumulate with the back testing for fair value gaps, that's how you convince yourself that what I'm teaching you, it's no fluff. There's no rehashing. There's no renaming of other things. This is exactly what the banks are doing. I'm not talking about the banks like J.P. Morgan or UBS. I'm talking about the central banks. And I let everybody else think they figured me out on Twitter and social media, but you're seeing the real stuff. So the month of May, that monthly range, we expect it to expand lower, have a strong impulse move lower. Inside that monthly range or candle, there are four weekly ranges or candles. All we're trying to do, okay, is we're seeking some range inside that monthly range before the candle completes and a new monthly range begins in June. That is to say that we want one or more of the four weeks that construct a, a monthly range to profit. That's what this model's seeking to do. 
I have a dollar index chart here, and I'll zoom in on that because you can appreciate what I'm going to show you here. This is the respective lows for the dollar index. Okay, so we obviously you know because of the analysis every single week and the midweek Wednesday reviews, uh, I've been bullish on the dollar index, expecting these equal highs to be taken out, and also reaching up into that weekly SIBI. So we have a higher low here in the 1st of May. So May 1st, 2019, we have a higher low on the dollar with a relatively bullish scenario with a draw on liquidity. Everything was bullish dollar, which is exactly what you want to see for a month that's bearish foreign currency or cable. If we move over to the British pound chart, here's those respective reference points in mirror image. We have the old high here, and the higher high formed in the British pound. Now, this higher high forming when we saw that the dollar index was unwilling to make a lower low. Like this should have went lower. It didn't. This is accumulation okay, of dollar and distribution and pairing of orders above an old high. So they ran buy stop or buy side liquidity. Why did they do that? Remember, I gave you details and hints all this month. Go back to the week of non-farm payroll. I guarantee you, all of you forgot about model number four. Nobody followed the instructions I gave relative to the seasonal tendency lessons in, in month number five. I told you to go through and on a calendar for the next calendar year in 2019, you want to have a list of markets that you want to be watching for that particular month. That's how you use model number four. Now, I'm going to say it again for those that didn't pay attention the first time. How you use model number four, you're going to study the seasonal tendencies, and you want to pick the best months with the best seasonal tendency pair or currency or even commodity. It doesn't have to be a, a currency. And you're going to create a watch list per month for every single month. And you're also going to study which ones generally perform better each quarter of the year. And then you got it. That's your watch list for mega trades. <sighs> Holy cow. You tell me that I just pulled in mega trades. I brought in swing trading, seasonal tendencies, and all the quarterly shift moves that's going to happen every single year. Yeah, that's exactly what I just taught you. You've had it since model number four and month number five content. That's what mentorship is. Taking the parts, putting them together. There's so many limitless ways of using the content I've already given you just in core content. I don't have to teach you anything else new. And I can build all kinds of beautiful systems and methods that will absolutely destroy anything else out there in the marketplace. There isn't anything out there. There's not one thing out there that anyone else is going to teach you that's better than model number four. Period. I don't care what discipline it is. I don't care who won what contests, how many percent already did it. I don't care, okay? Nothing beats this. There's nothing beating this because this is, the, this is the secret sauce, if you will, for finding all the big moves every single year. If you look at and follow Larry Williams, every year he does like uh, this pick that he does like a uh, – I'm not sure if it's a newsletter or it used to be a newsletter, but he used to pick like the big moves he was forecasting for the, the for the coming year. And I always kind of like in the beginning when I was a new trader, I subscribed to all that stuff. And I wasn't really surprised, you know, when a lot of it didn't come to fruition. There was too many uh, months in between when things would change. And a lot of the things he taught were kind of like arguing internally with me about why he was suggesting certain markets were going to outperform that year. It was a problem for me because the hero I had created in my mind about him, you know, as my first real mentor, is that I didn't, I didn't find it comfortable for him to be so wrong. I didn't like that. So I created another challenge for myself where uh, where he said he, he didn't understand how people buy below the open on bullish days. Uh, well, now I, I taught that, and it's power three. Well, he didn't come out and say he sucks as a trader and his big moves aren't that good. He filters out for each year. He didn't ever really say that, but 
that's what I got from studying his first six or seven years of him doing it in my career. I mean, he's probably been doing it longer than that. But when I came to the realization that who he was, I subscribed to everything he did. And you know, even his S&P trades. And I really wasn't impressed with that either. So I quickly determined that he has a hit and miss strategy. But when it wins, he can say this is the reason why. But when it loses, he doesn't know why. He just accepts it. And that's, I guess, in a lot of ways, that's fine. But for me, I'm not wired that way. I, I need to find out why. <laughs> so that's why I understood the markets were algorithmic because I, that's how I think. Everything has to be binary. It's always been that way with me. I'm, I'm, I'm black and I'm white. I'm yes and I'm no. And I'm polarizing even in my personality. And that's why I'm not everyone's mentor. But if people would just segregate my personality – from the content that I teach, there isn't anybody on this planet that I wouldn't help turn into some crazy nut job that could pull precision um, setups out of the marketplace consistently. I can do that for anyone, but you have to overcome me. I'm not going to change me for that to happen. I can't. I've tried it many times, and I just can't do it. So I got to be me. And what I sat down and I said to myself, I said, look, there's going to be signatures in the marketplace that tell me when these moves are going to happen. And I didn't trust the COT data anymore because I was believing every time he saw a heavy net short position by the commercials, Larry Williams in his hotline. I'd, I'd call it up. I'd, I'd be in there you know, looking to do something with the bond market the next day. I'd be looking to try to trade soybeans and whatever else he was talking about, live cattle, lean hogs, or live hogs back then, pork bellies. Oh, is pork bellies. This pork bellies. He was pretty good at pork bellies. I'll give him that. But they don't trade anymore. So... <laughs> the the epiphany I had that led to model number four was deciphering COT the way it really is, like I show you here and showed you in the mentorship, and combining that with seasonal tendencies on a monthly basis and also each quarterly shift. So there isn't just this blanket statement that uh, 2019, the big winners – or the big moves, or the mega trades, because mega trade isn't my term. I, I just borrowed that from Larry Williams. So in that regard, I do take that because that's what he's all referred to him as a mega trade. And I was very clear about that even in the free tutorials when I was teaching all that stuff. And I said it back then in the '90s when I was teaching. I said, "That sounds awesome, mega trade. You know, that's the trade I want to be. That's the Bitcoin. <laughs> that's the Bitcoin move of every uh, every year in the commodity in the commodity market." But there's that move. Every single three-month period. And that's when it hit me, like, oh, that's what that is. That's portfolio shifting and money rotation, okay? That money cycle that takes place in how the financial markets swing every three months to stimulate and agitate, okay? Because if they don't do that, if the central banks do not instigate movement, the markets will become stagnant. And a stagnant marketplace is not in their best interest. They don't want stagnant markets. They want gyrating markets. They want to see movement. Okay, so that's why seasonal tendencies are there. Okay, it's, it's the only reason why they're there because they're, they're following the same model. If you look at, from a top-down perspective of the central bank is the puppet master. They're, they're the storefront owner. The commodity is price. So if they're selling price – Either whether it be higher or lower, okay, or the narrative, let's say it that way. If, if they're you know, trying to convince the public it's a bullish market or it's a bearish market, you know, that stimulation in the thoughts and understanding of traders and investors is going to create more volatility because who's the, who's the volatility and liquidity that the central banks are really trying to entice? The large speculators. The folks that are at these big banks, the UBS, the Citi, uh, J.P. Morgan, these large Goldman Sachs, all these big firms that have lots of money behind them, that's what the central banks are working with. They are playing counterparty to them. Now, sometimes they consume like a cannibal, and sometimes they don't. And it's not that they're trying to put those banks out of business. They're, they're, they're not in there trying to do that because if that was their motive, they would have done so. 
you can study the CO2 data and see that the large speculators okay, are always diametrically opposed perfectly to the commercials. So I don't try to worry about you know, outsmarting either one of those parties. I just want to know what the commercials are doing right now for this quarter and this month. What's hot? And that's what I do with month. I'm sorry, uh, model number four. I actually use model number four every single month. Now, it's taught to you to use as a quarterly shift, but I just told you how I also use it in amplified uh, format. I literally use model number four every single month with a hot topic uh, seasonal tendency. So every month, there's a seasonal tendency that's usually very hot. And if I get technicals to line up with that, with the dollar index and SMT, you know, comes in there behind it. Oh man, it, it's just, it's nothing better than that because then it'll allow me to do a swing trade where this is a position trade. A swing trade would be a, a little bit longer than a, a one shot, one kill. Okay. But this is a monthly range. So we're talking about position trading. Okay. And sometimes these moves can be utilized to participate in like several months of a hold. Now I did that in my first five or six years of trading, uh, but it was very, very hard for me to stay in that model. So that's why I become a very, very short-term day trader or you know short-term trader you know, working with the weekly range. This is how I use the monthly range. Now, the wonderful thing about this is the framework that I gave you last year is exactly what came to, to pass here again. It's the same market. It's the same context. The same thing that I taught you in the logic behind this model is exactly what took place in this market. Everything that I told you on the weekly reviews and midweek reviews relative to the, the uh, cable market, think about it. I told you that we were focusing on GBP this, this whole time. I was shunning euro dollar. See how it's starting to make sense now? I'm not willy-nillying, okay, and pulling things out of the air just to hear myself talk. As much as I am very, very wordy, okay, and long-winded, I'm telling you a lot of details because I want you to be able to go back and hear me. Oh, he did say that. All those things, they're all premeditated statements. I've already, I already know what this is going to do. I already know it. Proof of it is, is go back and look at what I taught you last year. Those videos, okay, when I give you these things, they're for your learning. I already know this stuff. So if you look at the logic that was shown to you last year for model number four, see the folks that just came in, they don't really appreciate, okay, like the new charter members for this year. They're like, oh, this is neat. The first group, they should be like, man, this is this really is incredible. I guarantee you none of you, none of you revisited this model number four for me. And I didn't want to prod you because I want you to see by error, because it's the only way you're going to learn. I told you this was going to happen last year. And I'm telling you now, it's probably going to do this every single year of your career. Now think about that. Everybody right now is talking about, oh, the Mega Millions game tonight. Okay. <laughs> Some guy on Twitter asked me, do I buy lottery tickets? No, I don't buy lottery tickets because it's rigged in a way that I can't, I can't beat that system. This is rigged, but I got the data and statistical probabilities behind what I do in my decisions. Model number four is a perfect example of time travel because you'll, you'll be able to know, <laughs> okay, what the markets are most likely going to do in May for the British pound. Think about the power in that. Now, granted, it's one condition, it's one market, and it's one particular month of the year. But man... What do you think this move right here can do for you? If you do it every single year and you milk it, that's what I want to teach you a little bit on today because it's not just a long-term position trading model. There's a lot of things you can do with this. So using the framework that was shown for the original lesson, all right, so the market makes another higher high, runs out the daily high here. It's a higher high. From SMT divergence, we have buy side liquidity being ran. This is a Judah swing. This is a... Um, a turtle soup sell, you know, false breakout, whatever you want to call it. it this is pairing orders with buy side liquidity for smart money looking to go short. If they're taking this entry or pairing orders above that, okay, they're running an old daily high, which is part of the logic in 
the original model. It's an old daily high inside the last 20 days. Right here, count back 20 days, that's what you have here. It could have ran this high, didn't need to. Why? Because we have this short-term high here. Remember, it's an any old high or low in that range because that's where the liquidity is going to be, here and then here. So if it runs up here and falls short here, what's the rules we have to sell short on a stop at the last up close candle? That's this price right here. So we don't need to worry about if it's going to run this high or this high because either one, you're not going to get into trade until it comes back down here anyway. That's why I gave you this model for position traders that don't have time to sit in front of charts, day trading, worrying about things every five minutes. You can relax. The market will take you in the market when it's time. Okay. So once this creates a scenario, immediately you put an order right there at 130.31. You want to stop. You're selling short. Your stop loss goes to the top of that candle. That's it. What are you aiming for? Liquidity below. A low here. Where, why this low? Well, that's the lowest low in the last 20 days. Okay, well, what about the lowest low in the last 40 days? That's what this line is here. Well, this is the lowest low in the last 40 days. What about the lowest low in the last 60 days? That's this line right here. Well, that's this liquidity here. Remember what I was telling you all month long? We're going to be targeting this run below this low here. After we take this area here and this low out. You see how I was using this model the entire month of May. Every single week I was explaining to you before the market reached for these liquidity points. Every single time the logic was model number four. <laughs> I can't make it any plainer than that, folks. It's just as simple as that. It's cut and dry. Okay. It's not a lot of moving parts to this model. It's very simple. Okay, I'm taking few port, few points and parts of what you learned from all the core content and put it in certain positions and places at the right times, and it's becoming perfectly clear to you. Now, looking at this, we have the open here, a rally, creating a monthly high here. And then what is that? That's the Judas swing. And then market breaks down, power three. Now we're towards the end of the month, but not the very end of the month. So just like the London close on a daily range, we're near that, okay, where we're going to probably expect it to bounce around and go off the low. It could go lower. I'm not saying it isn't going to do that. I don't know personally. I don't know that. I don't need to know it. But in here, we would expect it to now consolidate and you know move in the consolidation. Go back and look at the uh, seasonal tendency, and you'll see that's exactly what the seasonal tendency show, both on a 15-year summary and a 40-year summary of what the seasonals do. It gets real choppy right about now, going into the month of June. So we caught the biggest swing for that seasonal tendency. Already it's in place. And it's also satisfied all of the points of liquidity. We have the old low here. We have the sell side liquidity with the old low here. And then beyond 60 days low, because that's what happens when we use the up-to-data ranges, what happens if we go below the lowest low in the last 60 days, Michael? Then you go outside the next, what's the next low? Here. That's all I did, folks. That's all I did. I used the very things I taught you in the mentorship. I'm not creating new things. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm not trying to make it harder for you. I'm doing exactly what I promised back in August of 2016. When I started this whole circus here, okay, everything I told you is happening. But I also told you it's going to take time. Look what you've learned so far. Look what you have in your understanding right now. Believe me, this is nothing. This is nothing compared to what you're going to learn. But you, I have to give you certain things to, to grow in your confidence and also to keep you inspired to study. Because if you don't study, you're not going to get where you want to be. Now, this shaded area here is delineating the seasonal tendency when it's bearish. Okay, so May 1st, all this time we're bearish. Isn't that exactly what I shared in the 2018 presentation of model number four? Think about it. Years ago, on baby pips, I showed that I made a thousand pips in the month of May. This is why I did it and how I did it. 
using model number four. I said, come on, think about it. Everything I do is scripted. Not what I say here because I just I have diary of the mouth. But everything I do from an engagement perspective is always to script because that's what the markets are, scripted. And I figured it out. So I'm sharing with you the very mechanics that you need to be doing every single time you go into the marketplace. Look for these low-hanging fruit scenarios. If you trade outside of them, don't be confused and, and, and surprised, really, that, that it's harder because that's why I trade very infrequent. Now, on Twitter, you see me doing it just about every day I'm doing something. I do that to answer people that are talking smack about me. Now, I'm not directly saying, ha-ha, look at this, but they know. They're watching. So it's just like an inside joke for me, and they know who they are that are talking smack. I don't need to call them out and point to them. They all know who they are. So the breaker here, we have a down close candle here. Remember breakers? Well, that's the pattern here. So even if you don't use this model and you need confidence, okay, you need to be assured. You wait for it to break down like it does here below the low. It goes below the breaker and then trades right back up until it here. So there's an entry using the breaker. Well, wow, that's pretty neat. It, 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 we're combining some things. Also, if you look real close, there's a small little fair value gap right there. You've been spending a lot of time with fair value gaps recently with me. Okay, well, that could be your entry here. Trade into there. There's your entry on a fair value gap. Wait a minute now. We have model number four's opening price on this last up close candle, which is also what? When price breaks down below the last up close candle. Isn't that a bearish order block? Oh! You see, it's not one PD array that's better than the other. It's the market condition that dictates which one you use. Think about that because it's escaped most of you all this time. All of you want to be order block champions. <laughs> Everybody on YouTube has got a YouTube video about order blocks, and none of them know what they're talking about. None of them. Now, one on there that knows what they're talking about when it comes to order blocks. Want proof of the pudding? Go and look at their videos and watch what happened in the market afterwards. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. Okay, so when I'm pointing to certain things, it works because I have the narrative and I have the logic behind why these things are going to work. Again, just because it's an up-close candle and market traded down below doesn't make it a bearish order block. If there's a fair value gap there and there's a seasonal tendency or there's a heavy draw on liquidity after running external range liquidity like we have here. Okay, so we have external range liquidity tapped here. So if smart money's going short here, what do they want to do? They want to see prices go lower, right? Of course they do. That's the only way they're going to profit. But they can't profit with just going down a little bit. They needed to go for a larger pool of liquidity on the other side. There's a large pool of liquidity on the sell side right here. They rush for that here. They hit it. And then there's another one here. They rush for that one. And then over here for good measure. Boom. Every single one of them we talked about before it happened. We focused on your euro dollar what? Next to nothing. I said don't touch it. Why? Because this is the one that's loaded for this month. Hello? Come on. Listen to me. Okay? You have to listen. If you do not listen to me and you try to do things on your own and try to tinker with stuff and you don't do the very things I've taught you with the rules I've given you, why are you here? Think about that. Because if you're not getting what you hoped to get, it's not because I haven't taught you. It's because you're not listening. And some of you don't want to listen. And that's fine. I don't need to do anything. The market's going to correct you. And either you'll determine whether or not that you have to correct yourself and get in line with the rules I'm giving you, or you'll get removed. The market has a real good, efficient way of doing that. So let's take a closer look at what goes on in this model on a lower time frame. Now, when I say lower time frame, I'm not talking about 5 minute, 15 minute like that. When we are position traders, we can still use a 4 hour chart. And there's nothing that's going to prevent anyone being able to look at a 4 hour chart and help them uh, frame a setup or get more refined details. Here we have that same price swing. Here's that higher high that creates the S&T divergence. 
And here is that opening price on the daily. I've extended it out in time. And we also have the breaker here. So the market goes below this low on this candle right there. When we trade below it and come back up into the breaker here, you could be a seller there. Now, I know this is not part of month number four, or I'm sorry, model number four's uh, logic. But I'm trying to bring things together because you can see how starting with the framework of model number four or seeing a market move that's already happened that you may not have caught but you study it and go back into looking at the details and say, oh, wow, this is in the process of creating a model number four scenario. Then you can still use all the things I've taught you to get in sync with the move. Oh, yeah, now, how, now I'm starting to get something, right? So here we go. You can go short on the stop here, and you're filled using the daily candle. It's simple. It's done. Your stop loss is up here. Now, that is 145 pips risk. Now, some of you are thinking, there ain't no way. <laughs> I don't care how good that move was, Michael. There's no way I'm entering a trade with 145 pips stop loss. And I agree. I just, I just, I have a real problem with that because I know there's ways I can refine that risk. And I want to teach it to you in this model here. But I want you to still remember that this is what the original criteria is. And still, it's beautiful. So we have over 400 pips available running the old daily lows here and here. That's what those liquidity uh, points are. Runs the liquidity, and then we have this big surge up in here, runs up into a fair value gap. Perfect opportunity to go short again. Now, I missed that, and I was very clear when I said that. I, I didn't see it when it happened, but I warned everybody back here, you know, take your profits. If, you, if you've been in the move, take your profits. It's Tuesday right before FOMC. FOMC... Even in minutes, will still sometimes create non-farm payroll circus rides. And, well, you see it here. Boom. Did it go up to any just random level? Absolutely not. It went to what I've been teaching you, fair value. There was very in, – in, there was a lot of instability for price on the downside here. And buying uh, liquidity or offering the buy side liquidity wasn't efficiently handled here. It's only one single pass through on the downside. Now, notice from the wicks low to this candle's close, it passed both directions in there. But this range from this candle's high and this candle's low was left open until we saw this candle. And it trades up into it beautifully. Then it gives it back. And I mentioned on Twitter, interesting level that the four hour trades to on cable. I wanted to, I prodded you, look where it's going. Think, folks, think. Okay, that's how I use Twitter. I get your attention, whether you pick up on it or not, it's not for me to decide. But I'm doing it every single week. I'm pointing somewhere, and I want you to focus. It's not a signal service. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. But you can see the things happening real time if you just pay attention. And don't be upset if you're not picking up on everything because you're going to learn a lot from the hindsight side of it. That's how I taught myself. Everything I've taught you, it was all through hindsight. And you see me every single week calling these moves every single week. It works, but you have to submit to that process. So we have 145 pips risk with over 430 pips available in a positive range. Okay, this is the potential to make profit if you hold the entire position and position trading is that's the nature of that style so you would hold for the lowest point of liquidity in the last 60 days and if it still has time and liquidity that could still be tapped or purged you look and see if you can get some of it but this is beautiful like we have over 400 pips on a position entry now that's not 500 pips michael you said it averages around 500 pips well that's very close to it right i mean it's not exactly 500 pips but I know some of you are thinking that, and also I'm going to bring a little bit more lessons in detail. So now we're starting to start thinking a little bit more algorithmically. Oh, that big word, algorithmically. <laughs> if we look at this price swing, okay, and we I already mentioned this is a market maker sell model. Go back and look at the profiles on the form and in the videos. We have consolidation in here, market rallies up, reaccumulation, smart money reversal, low risk entry. <gasps> wow. This is a four-hour chart. 
And I could see this entry here if I know I can trust this pattern because it's usually consistent with seasonal tendency. And I trust this is manipulation because of the SMT divergence between the dollar index and the euro dollar. So we have both SMT divergence from a correlated pair stance with the euro, and we have USDX SMT divergence with the dollar making a higher low. So we have everything, everything. There isn't one ingredient missing for this trade here. Everything's there. We got blue ribbon results coming. So if we expect this to be a Judas swing, non-farm payroll, okay, late in the day on Friday, if you're a position trader, you can get right in there and sell it right before the close of the day. Or you can wait for proof. What's the proof? Well, you want to wait and see. It may not be yet Friday. maybe the next trading day on Monday or Sunday. But you want to see the market try to trade away. And it does. And it creates a fair value gap. Right here. One single pass, that candle right there. And this candle defines it with its high right there. Now, it's not going to show you the price because this is a PowerPoint. I want you to go into your charts. You study it. Market creates a run on that liquidity, taps into it, fair value gap or entry drill, boom. You can go short here using a fair value gap at 131.25 or 125 and a half because that would be the actual uh, price level here. And you can still use that old high, framing it the same way we would do it on the position entry model for model number four. And we define our risk with a meager 50 pips. Whoa, we went from 145 pips risk to now 50 with still the same profit objectives in mind. This one now is a better, better, well, the R model was well over 10 to 1. 10 to 1 <laughs> on a position trade. Oh, it gets better, folks. Watch. This is your entry here. Stop loss here. Now. If you miss this one, fine, no problem. Wait and see if it creates another fair value gap. Remember, this is a four-hour chart, folks. It's not the five-minute chart or one-minute chart where I was telling you go and look for these five-minute and one-minute uh, fair value gaps to get in an institutional order flow for the daily range. This is a long-term position move. So if you see inefficient moves like this fair value gap in here, if the market trades back up to it, order, in, order flow entry drill, entry technique, boom, sell short there. Or if you've already taken your entry here, say you, say you went short five of them here. Say you have five minis here or five standards or 50 standard lots, whatever, you're, whatever it is. It doesn't make a difference what it is. If you've done, say, for instance, five here, okay, you want to do three here. You want to do less because you're pyramiding, you're adding. So you don't want to be building up. When I first learned how to trade, a guru, uh, Ken Roberts, and I was going in there trying to trade 10 contracts of corn. And if it gave me another uh, entry technique to get in there, which at the time all I was doing was, at the time I was only buying. So I was doing everything I'm showing you here in reverse. But I was buying every time it created a new higher high, I would be buying on a stop. And that's all I was doing. I was buying strength. That's all I really did with, uh, with commodities when I first started. And once I experienced a down move or down or bearish market, I didn't know what I was doing. I was losing a lot of money. So... The, the style of pyramiding I was taught by Ken Roberts was if I buy 10 and my account grows in equity and I can afford to trade 20 more because of the profits, I would buy 20 on the next entry. And then if I could carry 40 okay, on the next entry after that, I would do that. And I would build these big positions up you know, that would really be way over leveraging my account. I did one of them in soybeans. And one of them also in wheat. And, and quite frankly, I was trading on the uh, uh, final notice day and, and, and trading where, like, there's no limits. Like, the current uh, the, the currency, that was actually a, uh, a grain. Uh, Chicago Board Trade Wheat um, does, didn't have any limits when it did that. And it was move, it moved like $5,000 per contract in one day. It was crazy. Like, it was moving all over the place. And it was in the mid-90s. There was all kinds of drought issues and problems. And I was in that. But as good as that move was in my favor, that could have been something that would have completely crushed me. And I wouldn't have been able to have the money 
to pay the brokerage firm. Like it would have been, it would have been a real problem. But that's what that kind of pyramiding does, and you don't want to do that. Uh, if you go in again, say say you did five here, okay. So, say for the sake of safety, <laughs> say you went in with five minis here, okay. And if you get this entry here, you can add to it three more minis, and your stop loss on the three minis here would be this high here. In this position here on the five, the stop loss would be here. But you would only do that position if you allowed yourself to have that total risk not exceed your maximum risk exposure. My maximum risk exposure is 3.5%, only because I'm comfortable with finding setups that are really good choice setups, and I'm pretty efficient about getting money back if I lose it. I'm not suggesting 3.5% is ideal for you. In fact, it's way, 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 way too high. 2% is way too high for you. I think 1% should never be exceeded if, unless you've been trading for five years consistently profitable. Never, ever, ever, ever experience larger risk than 1%. You can do a lot. Trust me. It doesn't feel like you can because you, you don't know the math, math behind it. But doing what I'm going to show you here, you can still build velocity trading position trading. But I don't have the patience, the personality to stay in these types of moves. But nonetheless, we have another fair value gap in here. This is your entry, and the stop loss would be above this high here. So you have three entries here. Either one of these can be used as the initial entry and not use the opening price from the daily candle because I've incorporated other facets of the core content with this model. Now, say you went short five here, you added three more here, and then now what would you do here? One. That's it. And then you can't add any more. Why? Because once the market moves below this point right here, what's this point? This is the dealing range PD array matrix. Okay, the dealing range is this. This high here to this low, right? No. Teach me, teach me dealing ranges, Michael. What do you mean when you say dealing range? Well, I'm teaching it right now. The low to the high, that's the initial parent price swing or the original price range. Okay. The dealing range is defined by the initial sell signal right here. Once this sell signal happens and it starts to deliver price on the downside, that is where you start and you define the dealing range. Not this, because this is a stop run. This is the dealing range. Why is it a dealing range? Because you can see them selling short here, and now they're distributing price lower. Oh, wow, you got a lot in this lesson so far, and we're not done. If we have the dealing range defined like this, then you incorporate what I taught you in model num uh, month number five. Using the PD array matrix and the premium to discount and seasonal tendencies, you use that with this range. This dealing range is defined and split in half here. You can only add, you can only add or enter at the midpoint or higher when price is in a premium. And you can only pyramid when it's in a premium. Down here, the probabilities fall off precipitously in terms of odds and of in being in your favor for any additional entries. Even though they can be shown here in hindsight, trust me when I tell you that just because a seasonal tendency works a lot, it can still burn you. And the only way you can define it with high probability, which is what you're learning here, this is the facet you need to see in your setup. If you do this, this is what IPTA is actually doing. This is the whole framework behind this particular price move using what I've only taught you thus far. So you can frame it with an algorithmic stance in the perspective. There's a thousand different things okay, inside this fractal here that I have not taught you yet. That is crazy based on time and day. And I'm telling you, 2020 is going to be awesome because you're going to see a lot of things that are going to be very, very dry in delivery of content. But it's the things that you don't understand that I do that leads to why I'm such, you know, I'm very consistent. And this, these are the things that no one knows. So, but this is a framework using just the core content that you can see how IPTA does in fact do what it's doing all the time. I told you this framework is going to be here in May. I told you last year, and here we have it again, okay? 
I also told you that it moves about 500 pips on average. Well, hello, here's 500 pips. You do the math on what you could have avoided, uh, well, not avoided, but what you could have afforded for trading either of these setups or all three of them using the criteria I gave you. If you sell one down here and you're using a stop loss up here, there's not a lot of risk there. If you sell short here and you're using the stop loss up here, there's not a lot of risk there either. If you're selling short here and using that as your stop up, there's not a lot of risk there either. So they're all around 50 pips or so or less from the entry to where their stop loss would be. You need to determine how much you're going to allocate initially. Now think, if you've done your entry here on five minis and you're using this stop loss up here, and you don't want to exceed 1%. That means if you have intentions of potentially adding to the position, then you have to use less than 1% on your first entry. And then factor in how much you can afford going forward. That's something that you need to determine yourself. That's, that's going to be that gray area that I just won't go into. Because... If I say anything in terms of this is the framework that you should use, um, this is what you should do for your, your setup, I'm actually telling you what to do with money. And I can't do that because we're talking about demo trading and I'm not licensed to give that type or, or that level of um, advice. So I'm pointing you in the right direction to determine how you can frame it yourself. But you have to be very aware that even though – you're entering in here or here or here. The ideal scenario is, is you want to be entering above that midpoint in the premium. Now, some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute now. This is a four-hour chart. Isn't there other opportunities to enter down here? Yes, but that's other models and that's other applications. And it's, right now we're talking about day trading and, and swing trading intraday. That's not the scope of this model. So don't be confused I'm not stating that you still can't take a five-minute fair value gap in all this price action here because we're in a uh, discount for the setup. I'm specifically talking about model number four, which is a position trade model. The only thing I wanted to include here and amplify with the supplementary lesson is how you can pyramid using this model and how to frame the high probability aspects and think about price from an algorithmic standpoint. What makes the setups... Uh, in line with IPTA is what I've shown you here. And I taught you how to define what the dealing range is. And this is how you do all the dealing ranges. So now you hear me talk about, okay, there's this dealing range here. You need to look at that range and then break down the next time frame below it. Like if I was talking about it on an hourly chart, then go down to a 15-minute chart. And you'll see what I just gave you, the context of where the initial signal is inside that range. That's where you define the range or the dealing range from. And then there it is. The liquidity down here is first profit. That's where you take your first scaling. So regardless if you sold short here, here, or all of them, on every one of these, say assume for a moment that you got all three positioned, entried. This would be where you take a partial on all three of them. Now in the States, you'd have to take partial off um, because of separate positions, and you'll have to take them off you know, probably on this trade here first, and then this one and this one. It depends on what your broker's going to do. Other folks around the world may not have that problem, okay? But if you're doing it as um, a position trade, you can do this. You can do five minis here, if that was your entry criteria. You can do two, two, and one. It's still five, but you take two of the five that you initially enter here, and you take those off with a full profit on two of the minis at that low or below it. Okay? And then you would have two and one remaining. Same thing here. If you're going to be doing three, you can do three individual entries or three minis individually. And that's how you beat the uh, first in, first out, that type of stuff uh, in, the, in the States. So, again, you would enter that and then have your limit orders down here. And then it's no problem then. And the same thing here for this one. Okay, so you just got to do more work. Unfortunately, it's 
part of this game. So they keep making it harder because people like me keep getting smarter and sharing it with other people. <laughs> so 20 years from now, it's probably going to be impossible. So make your money now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think it's going to be that, that impossible. But again, this shaded area down here delineates the seasonal tendency. And we're kind of like near the end of it for the May. And it's also near the months. And beautiful, beautiful, beautiful symmetry. Beautiful depiction of price action. Absolutely crushing it in terms of precision. And look how much drawdown. Really look at this on your own data. Using these reference points framed in the context I gave here. Okay. Also, from a swing trader's model, okay, we have the parent price swing here, low to high. This range, if this is the fulcrum point, price breaks down below it, Take this range and then project it down, and you get that low, too. So it's a measured move. So everything about this market move is symmetrical and absolutely beautiful, beautiful. You should be spending at least two or three weeks putting together notes around this particular move here. You should have every time frame, all kinds of notes. I mean, you could literally study this until October and not exhaust it. It's such a beautiful fractal and it's got so much more here i can come back to this 10 years from now and show you <laughs> and show you just this chart here things that we haven't covered yet you haven't you have no idea how much there is there's so much more to it but you have to start here and i've said these types of things when we were in free tutorials and i said this stuff when you first started the mentorship in the first couple months you have to do this too but look where you got in terms of, where have you gotten right now you have taking yourself through your study to a level of understanding that nobody else outside of our community has. Think about that. That's really exciting. I mean, for me, it's exciting because I get to relive it. But you have the ability to do all of these wonderful things and not experience all the problems and pitfalls that I endured along the way. You're getting all the good side. And I really, really, really want you to appreciate that because... This cost me a lot, a lot, and I don't want this being tossed around. I don't want it being given away because you think you're the next, uh, I don't know. It, my work is not charity, okay? It costs, it's, it was a sacrifice for me to get this, okay? So hopefully you found this lesson insightful, uh, gleaned more insight as to what leads to these types of setups. And if anything, remember, like I said in the beginning of the video, when you first signed up with me, it took a lot of trust. And I can appreciate that because I have bought things and I've paid other people to try to teach me things, not just in trading, but other things. And it was just not what was expected. OK, it was not as the, it was not delivered as described. OK, the point is. You were told a year ago, okay, this specific criteria. Now, it's one thing for me to get lucky once in a while. Okay, it's one thing for me to say, um, well, you know, I think Tuesday is going to be a low of the week and it might do it 60, 60, 70 percent of the time. Okay, I'm not trading every Tuesday with that mindset. I'm waiting for specific criteria to, to come in agreement with. Then I'll look for that setup. But if the framework and all the things behind it aren't there, I'm not trading. I'll do something else. I have lots of things I can do. I can trade just the intraday volatility, looking for liquidity. I don't need any of the models to do that. I don't need a daily bias to do that either. You as an individual that's learning how to do this, you have to stay within the rules. Everything I've given you, stay within those rules. Don't try to get creative. Don't try to take that stuff and, and, and twist it around and say, well, I think it would work better if I did Don't do that. Okay? There's plenty of opportunity for you to do that in the future. You're just going to stunt your growth. So remember, you trusted me to join and pay. And you've been here, and now you're a charter member. This model, I'm telling you, this is the one that makes you friggin' rich. This is the one that everybody out there on the planet wants to know 
how to trade with. But they just don't know what to look for, and they don't even know how to ask for the information. But this is the one that if Larry Williams knew this one, this is the one that would keep him from having those years where the things he said was supposed to happen and it didn't happen. He would know which ones were going to happen. Every three months he should be doing his mega picks if he knew what he was doing. Now, I'm saying that with a great deal of respect. I'm saying his track record proves that his picks aren't always like that. Did the man destroy it on the Robins Cup? Absolutely. One year, 1987. If you study everything about that year, everything was in a line for that type of move. Think about it. You, you all probably never did that, but I did that, and that's one of the things that I cracked. He purposely waited for that year because everything was lined up. It was all one-sided direction. Everything was moving. In, in, uh, it was clear that markets were in trending model. We don't really have a trending model until like right now in, in cable. It's been choppy. It's been a mess. I think that if you sit back this weekend while spending time with your family, I want you to reflect about why you studied under me. Okay? And I want you to think about what was those feelings you had and what were the aspirations you had when you first decided that you were going to give me your time because it's expensive to give anybody or anything, you know, but time is the most expensive. You have given me years of time. And I believe that if you're honest with me and yourself, when you sit back and look at these types of things, just this one lesson, just this one, you can do so well unbelievably well and it gives you a clear framework there isn't a lot of things to worry about there isn't a lot of things to get tripped up on it's very very binary there is very clear filters i just introduced it here where do you do your entering where is it limited to you can't do any more of it and how to pyramid now also external entries outside of the original model I've given you other ways to use with what I've already taught you. Plug and play. Remember what I promised you? The models would be plug and play. You already know everything from the core content. All I'm telling you how to do is put those pieces together to get the portrait that you had in mind. So you understand from my examples after I do them. And if I point to something, I say this is going to happen, then I engage with it, then I trade it, and you see the examples and the fruits of it on Twitter, like everybody else publicly. That's why I do it publicly. There's people out there that think they want to come in here because I'm giving 30 different signals every single week. I don't do that, and I'm staying honest because there's people out there in industry watch groups like CFTC, SEC, whatever it is. You know, People are watching me. Okay, They believe me they're watching me, and that's why I show all of my results on Twitter because there's really no reason for them to want to come into the mentorship because there's nothing there's nothing actually happening in addition to those examples because those examples are the same ones I prompt you to look at. I tell you the market's going to go here or there, then I trade those directions in the bias using very, very small scale fair value gaps, um, optimal trade entries, and runs on liquidity. I'm not using everything you've been taught, but still people are still trying to get in here. Because they think there's something else. And some of you also are waiting for model number five and the other group waiting on model number 12. When you've had beautiful models already laid in your hands. So this weekend, I want you to think. Think about why you signed up with me. Why you even given me any of your time and consideration. Have you received from me what you hoped and if you don't believe you have you need to do some soul searching and really think about what it is that you thought you were going to get here because I'm telling you what the markets are doing every single week and it happens I've taught you how to engage with it and it keeps on happening I execute with it every single week how many losing trades have you seen me do 
Oh, show me on my FX book, Michael. I'm doing way better than that. I'm telling you tomorrow's newspaper headlines before it happens. I'm telling you the week in advance before it happens. And model number four, I'm telling you a year ahead. Argue it. You can't.